Hey, yo, it's your boy, Agent Albatross, here with the usual suspects. We got Spigs 18, and we got... <laughs> what? Man, you got GM intruded, Al. Actually, I reject that intrusion. It's your boy, Agent Albatross, here again, rejecting intrusions with the usual suspects. We got Spigs 18, or Anthony, we got Dean, or Alpha Dean. And uh, Dean, sorry about rejecting that intrusion, but why are we here today? Well... As you can see, we're here to talk about GM intrusions and player intrusions. We're going to get into it, you know, chop it up a little bit, talk about good and bad, you know. And with that being said, I'm going to throw it right over here like we normally do to Anthony. Um, how are we going to handle this here, Anthony? All right. Um, like pretty much like what Al said, I think it's uh, we, we're going to talk about GM and player intrusions. I, I, I can safely say I think this is a, one of our favorite mechanics for all three of us. We all seem to um, enjoy it a lot, and I think it adds a lot to the narrative. It adds a lot to the game. So I think we'll start it off with, Dean, could you give us the definition of a GM intrusion, and what book are you taking it from? I'm going to look right in the uh, Numenera uh, Destiny book, okay. and just for those out there looking for it, it's on page 123 in the new uh, Numenera Destiny book. That's good because you're giving us the most up-to-date definition, which yes. is actually really good. Right. So directly from the book, it says, anytime the GM can introduce an unexpected complication for, for a character, when they intrude in this manner, they must give a character two XP. The player in turn must immediately give one of those XP to another player and justify the gift. Perhaps the other player had a good idea, told a funny joke, performed an action and saved the life, so on and so on. Often, the GM intrudes when a player attempts an action that, according to the rules, should be an automatic success. However, the GM is free to intrude at other times. As a general rule, the GM should intrude at least once each, ses each session, but no more than once or twice each session per character. Anytime the GM intrudes, the character can spend one XP to refuse that intrusion, though that also means they don't get the two XP. If the player has no XP to spend, they cannot refuse an intrusion. Intrusions also happen, which isn't written here. Actually, it may be written further on, but they give examples. But an intrusion also happens automatically when you roll a one with no uh, XP awards. So that's the book definition of a GM intrusion. First off, um, just from a personal standpoint, I think GM intrusions make total sense in Cypher System, Numenera, any of the Monty Cook games, because Monty Cook games at its essence is a resource management game. And this is the easiest way to get resources, to get XP, to, you know, to further the story away, you know, further your line in the story. So um, I'm, I guess I'll start it off. What in your minds is a good intrusion? What do you think is, um, what, what do you think makes a good GM intrusion? Um, anything go ahead, Al. Go ahead. I'm out. So, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, so yeah, it's just anything. Uh, and I'm even stealing your first word too. Any anything, anything that drives the story forward in, in a way positive or negative. Like a lot of people, again, the book says complications, but they don't always have to be complications. Um, I don't know, would you like an example of one? Because I have a really good one that's like yeah, kind of helps with the forge. Yeah. So in our GM Roulette game, I believe what, the Candyland one, um, when it was my turn to GM, I introduced a GM intrusion, so I forget who was running. Um, it was the cat person, or I forget who, the, who was playing. That, but I made, I made that ghost spirit or the spirit of the forest appear as a GM intrusion to like kind of yes. slow him down and get him thinking about what he was doing. And again, it wasn't really a positive or negative thing. I just introduced another narrative element um, and again, gave them another option to do something or, you know, they could have, again, they had all the other options of, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on in that story. But I introduced another another element and again it was a way to help keep the move a story moving forward and i think that's what makes a good gm intrusion is something that helps keep that progression going yeah i mean i, I think that's actually a really great example because i think people tend to confuse gm intrusion with uh i'm gonna punish the players somehow yes. or i'm gonna make the player's life more difficult and 
people outside of Monica games or even outside of narrative games, you know, they think that if the, you give the GM too much power to, you know, change the story on the fly, that it's always going to be a negative effect. And I, I think that to me, GM intrusions is how do I directly change the narrative instantly to make the story more interesting for the players. So it's not it, it's not good or bad to me. It's how am I changing this narrative? What am I adding to this story that's either going to, one, make it more interesting, make it more complicated, make it helpful for the players? It doesn't matter as long as I'm changing the story somewhat to make it a more interesting and um, fun experience for the players. Um, and I, I can run with that same that same thought process from both what you and Al both have just said. Um, I love to use GM intrusions to introduce, you know, interesting elements. Um, we had a situation one time where I was running a game and we had a guy, you know, he had built his character to be like the premier swordsman of the lands. And he was, you know, back and forth and he was doing all of this great stuff all the time, you know, and he would decimate his enemies and in one game you know I, I figured let's shake it up a little bit let's drive the narrative but let's add something to it so you know and i took and believe it or not i took my inspiration from the princess bride i mean we all love that scene but i know. haven't seen it well we all know that was <laughs> <laughs> you need to see that you know but i'm saying you know the, the scene you know my name is inigo montoya you know you killed my father, prepare to die, you know. But the great battle between him and Wesley, you know, I took inspiration from that for this particular intrusion where, like I said, the guy is, you know, battling and he's doing all of this kind of stuff. Well, he's just battling mundane guards, you know, on, on, a, on a wall and he's beating them left and right. And then he goes for the last guard and, you know, he goes to strike and the guard catches the blade of his sword and smiles at him and goes, you really thought you were the only one? <laughs> and, you know and then they go back and forth so what ended up happening was the guard ended up becoming this great npc that plagued the players and the the great swordsman in the game you know but it was a gm intrusion that just blossomed into something more you know and and i think gm intrusions allow for great narrative moments you know and a lot of times, I'll be honest, my GM intrusions are inspired by the, what the players are doing. I don't sit down with a group of, you know, or a list of predetermined um, ideas or intrusions. That's I not just, a bad I'm, idea, though. Just want to interject. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it's actually very helpful on the, if you look in the, like the Monica Games Adventures, they give you intrusion ideas. Yes. Right. They do. All very handy to have on hand. Yes. But, uh, Even if you're not running the adventure, you could steal the idea for another. This is true, too. <laughs> oh, what do you guys think of um, the, the concept of you get two XP and you give another player an XP? So you're essentially awarding two people for the right to intrude into the story. I think that's a good... I think... I actually think that element is um, also a very unique item. And I think it works well because, like it says, you're awarding XP, and because my because Cipher Numenera is the strange, you know, is all about resource management. Mm -hmm. Like you said, this introduces those resources right there as the game goes on, and it also allows players to you know players can kind of think, you know, about well, okay, I've got I earned you know, three XP during the game. You know, the, I know the possibility at the end of the session, I'm going to get another couple or, you know, two to four at the end of the game. Well, these are, I can use directly for my, you know, re-rolls and all of this kind of stuff. You know, so you're not in this, put, you're not put in a situation where, you know, you're only going to have XP at one time to use. So I think it's great. Yeah, it, it definitely encourages that on the fly wanting to use them when you like you're like oh i just earned this like while i was playing oh gm intrusion oh that means like usually what i see is if a gm intrusion happens and there's a dice roll or something that happened a person earned an exp it's like oh wait i can reroll that like it always encourages that use um you know should hardship come their way from the yeah. dice gods <laughs> but um yeah yeah it's, it's it's an awesome mechanic um and again 
it encourages that that use of that resource management mentality, which is core to the cipher system in Numenera. I also I kind of enjoy the camaraderie at the table when when one person is getting XP and they're recognizing what another player has done well and awarding them an XP. Mm -hmm. I, I think it helps bring the table together. It helps, right. it, you know, especially I love it when I see someone asks, hey, who hasn't received an XP? You know, like, you know, because it, it like, you know, if, if for, it has everybody be this cohesive unit, like we here to help each other. And I, and I think it, I really enjoy that aspect of um, allowing a player to give another player an XP. And, on, and another, on, oh. another thing about GM intrusions that I really dig is the other side of the coin where you get that free GM intrusion on rolls of ones. Yeah. But here's the thought, the thought process, what I love about it for me, I think it's expanded me and, and pushed me forward as a GM because they don't always have to necessarily be a negative just because you wrote a one. It's yeah. just a complication, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, I, I, I did a, I had a situation that guys were trying to get through a, uh, basically a computer firewall in a particular game. So, you know, the player had to make, I believe it was three successes out of a course of like uh, seven or something like that, that I wanted him to do. Well, of course he failed mm -hmm. and he rolled a one on one of his attempts. So instead of making it, oh, you automatically fail or no way to get it done, I introduced a complication. There was another hacker on the other side and that, you know, now you're, it's against the clock. You yeah. got to get an extra success. If you don't get that extra success, it's not that you're going to fail getting your information, but mm -hmm. they're going to get your location and be able to send a strike team to get you. You see, that's a perfect example of utilizing the, the GM intrusion still make it difficult. Like, you know, off the top of my head, I don't even know the story. I could, I would think of something like, Hey, he rolled the one, he failed on the intrusion. Guess what? You have all successful roles, but now everyone's aware that you're hacking into the system and you have a certain amount of time to get through all these, wherever it is you have to get to. It's, right. it's not beneficial, but it keeps the story moving forward. And it's is, not, and it, it, again, it's not like, oh my God, we completely blew it. Yeah. You know, you know and, and the fact that I, as a GM, don't roll dice, I get to focus on the story and I get to think about you know, cool aspects, you know, it's not, oh, you broke your sword or, oh, your, your gun jammed or, you know, oh, you shoot your partner. You right, so to be fair, I'm, again, I'm, those are fun ones sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Intrusions, you know, the negative intrusion. Are still especially viable, on, yes. Yeah, and especially on ones yes. make more sense. Yes. You right. Know, Especially on ones, I absolutely agree with that. But since we we touched on some of the ideas of utilizing intrusions the proper way, could you guys give me some examples of what's a what makes a bad GM intrusion? All right, so um, yeah, you want to go first? <laughs> I, have, um, I have one about myself. If go for it. So mm -hmm. um, this again goes back to one of our GM roulette games. Um, mm -hmm. It was a superheroes one, or I guess super villains in this case. Mm -hmm. So, I forget the exact situation, because my memory is always fuzzy, but they were out in the streets and about to hide in a warehouse, and I believe Dean's character's brother, which was like an Iron Man-ish type character, was walking down the street, yeah. and his suit wasn't fully on yet. He had like, like exposed skin most places, yeah. like just all the parts weren't on, and Dean was like, I aim and I take a shot at him. <laughs> Uh, like instead of running to hide, you know, getting away, like he, this guy wasn't paying attention to anything. Like he was already walked down the block past him, and Dean was like, "You know what? I want to shoot him." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, I guess you could try." And I was like, "Actually, you want a GM intrusion?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, go for it." So I was like, at the last second, right, before, right as you're pulling the trigger, the rest of his armor pulls together, and he's now in a functioning Iron Man suit, and he flies off. And that was that. That just completely ended the... It was good and bad. So it, it ended that little kind of what could have been a very crazy offshoot of the story, which really didn't have any plot relevance in a one-shot. But again, it also, the negative, it kind of ruined his fun. I don't, again, I don't, know if he, I don't know if you viewed it that way, Dean, but it, it could be viewed as I stopped... I could kind of took some of your agency away because you really wanted to shoot him and i was like actually you know you can't do that <laughs> like we're not gonna let that happen right now you're just gonna murder this guy out in the street 
So, I was actually thinking about this last night after we decided to talk about this subject. Hmm. I thought about another way I could have taken it to make it more interesting and given Dean exactly what he wanted at the same time. So, as soon as he said, hey, I want to shoot him, I'd be like, okay, would you like a GM intrusion? <laughs> you say yes, obviously. So, I say, hey, you go and you aim your gun, and you pull the trigger, and it's a dead clear shot through his head, and he drops dead. <laughs> like, and I feel like that would have been... And then, and then, to follow it up, now you hear police sirens cl- closing in on your location. But is that an intrusion, or is that a successful role that he no, just No, I killed? mean, I, I forget if he was aiming for his head or his body. I, yeah. Either way, I I don't know if you said you wanted to kill him or maim him. It was it, my it was my brother. It was my older brother. Remember we kind of made the backstory. It's my older brother who yeah. you know was a bit of a jerk to me growing yeah. up. So hey, and I, hey, he, he was, was a cop. He was a good guy. He was a villain. Right, and I was a bad guy. So it was like you know what, you know I'm, I want to make him look stupid. And it was like you know I'm shooting. All right, so let's but, let's like, I was gonna say let's analyze this. Your, what you view as a mistake, right? Yes, yes. All right, so is it a mistake from what I'm gathering from how you're feeling? I, I, if I'm totally wrong, you know, you could correct me. <laughs> but do you think it was a panic intrusion? Like, hey, I don't want the story to go this way. I don't want him to shoot this guy. I'm just going to throw a GM intrusion out there yeah. as a panic move, which could be pretty much for most GMs. You know, like if they don't have where the, the story's leading to, they want to do it immediately. They hit the pause button on the story. Yes. I'm just going to GM intrude, hit this pause button, which essentially that's not what a GM intrusion is meant to be. Yeah, that- that's, and that's essentially what I did. <laughs> because I was like, oh, I don't know how we're going to take this. Because like, we're also playing GM roulette, so I have this 30-minute window like to tell my part of the story. And I'm just like, what are we going to... Uh, and I was I don't know, we got to cut that right now. And again, you're right. It is really not the point of an intrusion. It's more to help create possibilities than eliminate. Hey, I, I took away agency there when, which I didn't feel. I thought about it a little bit later. I was like, damn, that really wasn't cool. But again, I panicked. <laughs> and, and in one respect, I would I would agree. I would maybe tend to agree with you that it wasn't necessarily cool. But thinking back to it, you know, as a player at that point, I was just being bonkers. Yeah, I was just being I mean, a player. Yeah. yeah, I was just being a player. I was just being, I mean, it was, I was just being a jackass of a player with, with because that was supposed to be my brother. So, <laughs> like, and, like, I, I think, uh, I, I'm sorry, did you was going to say something? Cause I, was, I was just saying that. And so for me, it didn't, it didn't ruin anything for me. It kind of actually brought me back to wait a minute we do need to stay on task. <laughs> so it was, I think it was beneficial. And I think sometimes when you make those snap decisions done right, because of the way you did it, it worked. You know what I'm saying? It worked because- It snapped you back into, hey, we, we only have a half an hour. We got to keep the story moving. We got to keep the story. Not, and, and not, and not yeah. And it, it, so we didn't derail the direction you were going. You know, like we always talk about, you know, there needs to be rails. It just should be like a roller coaster as opposed to a straight train track. So, you know, you pulled the loop-de-loop on me. <laughs> you know? I, um, like, I, I, I totally understand what, what you mean. Like, you sort of hit the pause button and not panic, because panic, I don't think, is the right word. But you wanted to reset the story to keep it you know, going in the direction that you were leaving. It, it was basically more like what Dee said. I put up a rail real quick. I was like, yeah. wait a second, the roll course is not but supposed I, to go that I, way. <laughs> I don't necessarily think him shooting him. Yeah, exactly. Is, yeah. We, we could have played I, with it. We could have played yeah. with it. Like, like, I think if you wanted that same outcome, I think you would have been like, yo, you shot him. It went to his head and it was a holographic image. And now oh, you see a, a, a ship hovering over you. <laughs> brothers on that ship controlling this image that's more of intrusion because you add it actually elements yes and it's, to still the narrative the and it's changing the, the story so now there's, there's this ship that's looking down at us you know by us i mean the characters and it's something else another complication the players have to worry about but like i i don't necessarily think you shoot him giving the player what they want is an intrusion i think that's just that should be handled with the roles. Right. I, I, I can agree. I mean, that, and that's a, that, that is actually a good way to kind of refit it. But mm. because we're talking about this, I think it's also advantageous because 
it starts it starts the the process of thinking about intrusions mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you can you know even like you said having a list of intrusions written up not even necessarily for that particular game just a list of intrusions just start taking them out of monty cook books and stuff yeah. this way it starts the process of thinking on how you're going to intrude on a story you you should also have everyone's name that you're running for their character's name or whatever to make to i, I can't stress this enough make sure that you spread intrusions out evenly amongst everyone right you know and and say i I, Al, I gave Al an intrusion here. I got to make sure that I, I give Dean, Steven, make sure that it's spread out evenly. I don't necessarily, and I also, I'm a firm believer in group intrusions. Yes. Like, you, you should have, everyone should have at least one intrusion, and a group intrusion is when everyone gets one XP, and you change the narrative for oh, every, which yeah, involves- for the, entire, for the entire game. And yeah. another thing I like to point out, you know, and these are for people who, you know, who play other games. Mm. I want you to take take away from this. This is a caveat you can take away and use in your other games. Because even when like a player rolls a one or whatever, you know, give them a complication. Give them give them something to drive the story as opposed to you fall down a flight of stairs. I mean I mean and now if you play a stat a slapstick comedy game, that's that, that could be great. <laughs> but I'm saying as a whole, just something to think about. Cause I, I just think about going back to my days of playing uh, champions and they would give you characters. You could take um, limitations, you know, to get more power points. And one of the limitations was dependent NPC, mm -hmm. you know? So we always thought about that, like at may, you know, or, or, or Jimmy Olsen or whatever, but think about actually using those elements as GM intrusions those same kind of concepts, you know? So if a person had, you know, what I love for players to do, what I ask for my players, even in a one shot, give me, give me a, give me four or five sentences of a background story on your character. Give me some ideas because then those things can become into play. They can become GM intrusions, you that's know? A, that's a perfect, that's an excellent point. And, um, you know, to, to piggyback off that a little bit, um, if you want to, be a little more involved what anthony did in our last game and hit that he ran the um i forget what you named it the rat mafia one. Oh, lucas oh yeah, yeah. lucas sleeps with the fishes so in the beginning of that game so he knew all our characters beforehand like we all made characters or there were a couple pre-gens or whatever but anthony then, then he sprung this on us like as soon as we started we had like a mini session zero before the actual game and he went to each of us and he t asked us each a question in which he established some sort of connection with another character. So, for example, um, we had... Yours was hilarious. Yeah, mine was... Uh, I forget who who I, I had my connection with, but the I one who had the connection with me... something for someone. Like, I asked and who did you make it oh, for? Oh, I made, yeah, the... the, the um, what is it? The, the flash that was not yeah. solid silver, but actually... Um, you know, like counterfeit because I have yeah. like counterfeit. Yeah, he like craft. That. You were the one who crafted things. Yeah, and yeah. um, I forget. I, I forget uh, Alex's character name, but they thought it was a genuine flask. Joey. Joey, yeah. yeah. And yeah. um, and then a funny thing that happened to me was um, Anthony asked the grifter character, "Hey, you stole something from someone in the group, and they haven't noticed yet. And what was it?" So the guy was like, "I stole uh, ancient." I sold his crafting tools, this whole set. And I was like, wait a second, wait a second. I'm pretty sure I would notice if my whole crafting kit just went missing. So yeah. we did a little bit of a compromise. He was like, actually, I swapped out some of the pieces and you know, tools with counterfeits. So they weren't as high quality as what he's used to working with. And since then, everything he's been making, edible-wise, or, you know, because the things were catnip and yeah. like, cheese, they were giving people horrible diarrhea because my <laughs> proper tools were sw swapped out. And all these played little story elements later on in the game. There were more because there was, like, five characters, yeah. and they all had different sentences, but I don't want to go yeah. too on about that. But that was a great way to get people engaged in that process. Yeah, and and it gave you the ability to have, like you said, intrusions yes. and yeah, it, and, th those essentially are to help me because it gives me elements to add into the story, either intrusion or just the basic general premise of the story. Exactly, you know, it's helping me out actually, and it's also the players that seem to enjoy it because you well, know it's, it's an immediate 
connection to another player at the table. And that's that's and I mean, if you think about it, that's also right in the books as well. Mm-hmm. You know, your connections yes. to other characters in you know in the creation of of a group. That- I mean, this is another video, but the problem I have with the connections in the book, they too general. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I like I I. I I've never used any of the connections in the book because they, especially in the Cypher Core book, because for, you know, it's a generic system. It, it might work a little better in Numenera and the Strange, but in the Cypher Core book, it's a generic system. So you have no idea what setting, you know, so it's difficult to write, I, well, I would guess. Well, connections. That, I'm just saying that the, the concept. Yes. Is, yeah, is, yeah. And not that I've ever used any of the ones that are in the book either. <laughs> <laughs> But that's why I asked the questions I asked for the characters. And, you know, remember our superhero game, how I kind of connected all you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it was it was the same kind of principle. We, yeah, it was like, basically the same exact concept. You know, yeah. and, and it made us all connected, which right. is, you know, I, I, I think that the, the, the whole concept of connections is an excellent idea. I just not a big fan of the ones that are written in the book. But that's changing the subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get what's back. A, what's other examples of bad GM intrusions? I, I'll give my examples. I, what I hate in GM intrusions is I hate the combat intrusion, whereas you drop your weapon, <laughs> um, you slip and fall, the um, you know more bad guys show up oh, right when you're about to. The, the more bad guy, and I've I've seen that happen multiple so times. Many times. You you're about to win the fight. And the the GM thinks it's too easy, so all of a sudden around the corner there's three more exactly. Ion priests showing up. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I think all those are bad intrusions. I don't think they I, I don't wanna say bad. Like it might be fun once or twice, but I think they get used way too often. And yeah, technically they do change the narrative somewhat. I just don't think that that was the spirit of what the rule is. Well, if you remember Not correctly, true. I can you we can use that same concept and flip it on us here to turn it in. Remember in our superhero game at the end when I was running the last one and you guys were kind of mopping the floor Dude. with the bad guy? Instead of adding more bad guys. Oh yes, yes. This is how it's done well. Yes. You know, instead of adding more bad guys, I had I used the GM intrusion because they were fighting a uh a, a, a robot, you yeah. know, this this nanotechnology monstrosity and because they break up into th- uh, a whole bunch of little ones he right? broke yeah it broke up into three different uh you know drones but the three different drones were less powerful but it was more difficult now the party couldn't just focus on one thing and just wipe it out but that's done well because it's a description it's not i'm just adding in the same bad guys coming around the corner you actually <laughs> changed the narrative yes you know right. like th- that was done well you know what i mean like well that, and that's what i'm saying that that was what i was trying to get to was instead of just adding more bad guys do something unique with your bad guy mm-hmm. you know um or you know like the um one of one of the things that i i think it was a suggestion in a book or something one of the books i read where you introduce you might introduce another bad guy but the bad guy might actually help you only to hinder you later you know <laughs> so it could be you, you know see I, I so i used that one time i actually read it in one of the books i can't remember where i read it at but I used that one time, you know, on a, on a group because the bad guy came in, you know, they were getting a little bit overwhelmed and I didn't want the game to end. So I added another bad guy, <laughs> and, you know, he's like, nobody's going to kill these bastards but me. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> wow. You know, but then, you know, and then he starts going in, they were able to rally enough and he's like, okay, I, I'm going to live to fight another day. And he dips off. <laughs> you know, but it stuff like that. That, that I think that's the way you're supposed to, you know, if you want to shift the narrative and you want to, you know, keep a a, a bad intrusion from happening. You know, um, because Anthony basically said the mouthful. I I can't stand the lose your weapon, break your weapon, <laughs> trip over something. You know, you guys are heroes. I mean, even if you watch 
and and I, and I think about it that way because I watch you know the action movies, the, the you know all of this kind of stuff, you know. Um, watched Shaft last night, and it gave me an idea for uh, a, a pretty good intrusion, you know, and it you know because it was a GM intrusion. They were three guys swinging and get ready to crash through the window, and then the one guy's window didn't break. <laughs> he was too lightweight. You know, he weighed less than everybody else. So he's like, pink. Uh, that's funny. Pink, <laughs> you know. So, you know, it was it was it was pretty cool, you know, stuff like that. So it's like just kind of let your mind relax. And and again, um, I don't know if this falls under the same realm as what you dislike about this sort of intrusion where like adding baddies just you feel like the yeah. fight isn't hard enough. But depending on the genre, but uh, again, I can think of many ways to flavor this to fit many genres. If the bad guy is getting beat up too hard or whatever, have you like, oh, well, you know, instead of just saying, oh, I'm going to be lazy, add more of them, like there's 10 yeah. more or whatever. Have them like get powered up somehow, like in a like cyberpunk setting, he injects a you know, transhuman serum into his arm yeah. or whatever. We did that. Yeah, a, we did that as well. In a we did that. Setting. Oh, wait, which, which game was that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But either way, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Like, fla <laughs> flavor it in a fun and unique way. Don't just say, hey, there's more bad guys now. Oh, well, they have bigger guns. Like, yeah. that's just kind of plain, boring. Just like, oh, oh you, you know what's another way you could do, too? Like, I think we all have the same concept, but I think it, too, is, okay, if the bad guy's too, the big bad guy's too easy, let them be too easy. That, too, but, that works. What, when they go over the body, the GM intrusion is you find out that he's actually the younger brother or sister of the real big bad guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I and mean? And it like, builds anticipation, dry, adds <laughs> another plot element. There's a family of these people. <laughs> and, and, and the players get the satisfaction of being smart and intelligent, coming up with a good strategy that, that right. actually beat your big bad guy. Yes, they don't are. get the feeling of, oh man, we, we really worked good as a team and he just GM intruded to make it harder for us because we worked well as a team. Right. And 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 I think that's I think that's another element what I was talking about about GM intrusions and players making you become better at what better at your craft. Mm -hmm. Because you have to think about like, especially like w because we run so many one shots. What us doing one shots? When we make characters, I I know you do it, Anthony. I know you do it, Al. We all make every single character as a character we would want to play. Oh, always, so, always. So, so every character is basically a badass. Most of the time when I'm on playing, I don't even make my character. I just give Al a concept and then he makes it oh, for well, me. Oh, I got it. I make it basically down <laughs> but to that's the what team. I'm saying, you know. And in so a fun your character, way. So, so, we're all, so every character from those one shots is a badass. So you as a GM have got to think, wait a minute. I'm playing against five of me. I've yeah. given five different people this badass character. And I know I can come up with some craziness. What are they going to come up with? So you, it makes you craft better NPCs, and it also makes you craft better intrusions to drive your narrative. You know, and this is especially in situations like doing GM roulette or you know it's those improvisational moments that you have to have. You know, when you're running a narrative based game. You know, I mean, I love Monty Cook. You know, games like you know when we. Remember, like when we both ran Ashes of the Sea, Anthony. Great, great adventure. But, you know, I was running at a convention. I had to come up with an intrusion to get them into the facility because they were spending so much time in the, in the city. It, it's funny you say that, but I think that leads into my next line of um, questioning or statements is um, GM intrusions. How do you think it helps you as a GM to keep the story moving forward? And is that a tool that you should use to keep the story moving forward? I would say absolutely, you know, and that was the point I was making with, you know, Ashes of the Sea. Mm -hmm. I had to get the players. I was playing, running at a convention, so I had a, you know, four-hour block to run this adventure, and I wanted to be fulfilling. I wanted them to, you know, make it to the end, you know, you know, to some point of resolution. So they weren't sitting there, well, okay. And, 
you know, I did. They were spending so much time within the village, in the village scene and interacting with the people of the village. I had to come up with an intrusion. So I came up with the GM intrusion that the village got attacked by one of those, uh, those, those, I forgot what they were called, the worms that were, you know, burrowing under the ground. So, of course, the worms attack, the, the heroes go after the worm. Well, the worm had burrowed from the facility and they end up chasing the worm back to it to the facility yeah. to get them there That's but cool. that was my intrusion to get them get to get them on back on path how about you al um, do you have any no no ideas I, well, well what i was going to say was that while gm intrusions are super helpful and they should be utilized where you see fit um the cypher system and numenera and whatever have you like they have run so well that sometimes you might not need to use gm intrusions if you're not fully comfortable doing them yet or if you feel like it won't really add any anything to the story you don't have to do them for the sake of doing them because the book says you should have one a session you should have two a session whatever mm -hmm. um but in, in that case you also have to be mindful that again if you're not giving out these intrusions that the players are not getting this exp resource to you know use for rerolls or whatever have you player intrusions that which we'll discuss later but um so in that case you have to keep in mind that you can also reward exp for discovery or things of that nature so as the players progress the story it's like hey you found the villain's lair here's an exp for everybody hey and this is for an individual basis hey that was a really creative way you solved that problem here's an exp hey that was really good role playing for your character here have an exp always feel again if you're not comfortable with the intrusion still keep that exp flowing if you can i mean that's a great point because I think like everything else in Monica games, the system is entirely modular. So you don't, you, that's an excellent point. Al. You do, absolutely can run yes. Cypher system Numenera without using the GM and choose your concept. Would it be as fun? <laughs> I don't know, but you absolutely can. Um, I wanted to bring something else up because um, I think, uh, I don't know where I heard it. I'm pretty sure I heard it on Cypher speak with uh, Darcy and Troy. But how about the concept of declaring an intrusion and asking the player what the intrusion is? And nine out of 10 times, I would bet that the player will make it way more negative than you would have. It's true. That's definitely the implication of when you ask a player, what do you think the intrusion would be? They automatically go to the negative because they're yeah, not going to be like, hey, I want to do a positive intrusion. They're going to say yes. Like, oh, I found a bucket of gold on the floor. That's an intrusion, right? Like, you know what I mean? So would you guys ever incorporate that concept? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I might modify it slightly, you know, um, with basically maybe framing an idea, you know, framing a uh, framing you know an idea but letting the players flesh it out um yeah I, I don't see why i would why why i couldn't you know that and that might even be something i would use for like a bonus you know for the party or something you know okay i, I think i might have used it but i don't think i've asked the person directly i might have asked the other players Oh, yes, that's definitely happened where we're running out of ideas and we're like, hey, what yeah. do you think my good intrusion yeah. might be here? But I don't think I've asked but, the person directly, but I, I, I'm i curious about trying that so out. So on, on this topic, right, I think the best way to go about it, I, I, I've never really done it myself, so I, I don't yeah. have any firsthand experience doing this. But thinking about it, I feel like a fun way to do it, and I feel like I've probably done this in the past maybe at least once or twice, was um, let's say they're doing a task, right? And whether they roll the one or um, they, you know, I just want to give a GM intrusion on whatever they're doing, right? You ask them, hey, while you were doing X or Y, well, like repairing that drone or, you know, trying to jump over this cliff, something went wrong. What went wrong? <laughs> Like, you yeah. know, like something like of that nature. Like you don't necessarily give them the full capability to say, hey, I can say whatever I want. It's more in the scope of, hey, something went wrong while you were doing this. What, what, what and happened? that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying about framing an idea. Yeah, that was, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, I think we're all on the same sheet of music. I yeah. haven't necessarily used it, but now I think I might. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, yeah, I'm not even going to say I, I think I might. I, I remember I, when, when I heard it, I was like, oh, this is a cool concept. And I and I just maybe just like totally brain farted and forgot it, you know, forgot to use it in the game. Because I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to use it. And I never did. <laughs> I, I like the idea. It's a very nice it. idea. 
and I do, I, I, you know, and not, I'm not taking credit, but I do think they also stated that when you ask someone for an intrusion, that most of, most people will give you a negative response. Yeah. And on top of that, this also touches what I said. If you're not co- fully comfortable coming up with intrusions, this will help you in that aspect too. You yeah. don't have to come right. up. Just ask your players, like, hey, something, something bad happened to you. What was it? <laughs> like, <laughs> you just straight up ask them. And even again, what Anthony said, ask the table. Like, hey, something bad happened to this guy. What happened? Like, was to throw some ideas out there. Like, there's no, this, this, this it doesn't come off as negative I, I or like say, amateurish. I will say, you have to be, sometimes you have to be careful with that. Because <laughs> that can become a bad, that can not necessarily be a good thing. <laughs> within, all people. right, if I have to add, add an asterisk, within moderation. So yeah, right, I don't know. Especially if you have a difficult table. Yeah, because if you have a difficult table or somebody at the table, you don't realize that they don't like somebody at the table. <laughs> <laughs> he falls in a vat of lava and becomes Vader. <laughs> okay. so oh, I boy. think, I'm not sure if everybody thinks, but I think we kind of, you know, ran the gamut on GM intrusion. Uh, before we do that, I have one last one that's actually oh, okay. important. Everybody give your advice on GM intrusions to a new GM. What would you tell them? Oh, I mean, um, do you want to go first? Go ahead, Al. No, it's exactly what I literally just said 10 seconds ago. If you're having trouble using GM intrusions, ask the table. Ask the person you're giving the GM intrusion to. Like, uh, and again, going further back in the video, have a list of generic ones ready. Like, it starts raining, or you know, that that's it's not a major complication, but that can add a story element. Now the floor is wet. Now there's less visibility. There's all sorts of things that happen, even with the tiniest little bits of ideas. And again, don't be afraid. To ask, <laughs> like it's, uh, I know it might feel a little awkward asking your players to add more narrative, but it's kind of the point of the system. I feel like is to build that narrative together. So again, it's not explicitly stated in a book. Like if you can't come up with an idea, you know, ask someone, but don't be afraid to. My advice, honestly, if you're a new GM, buy an intrusion deck. Honestly, that's that's going to be a well spent twenty bucks. You know. I can give you all sorts of, you know, um, intellectualized ideas. What is, what is a intrusion deck for people that don't know? I know what it is, but well, <laughs> the Jim intrusion deck is just that. It is a it's a deck of a hundred cards with suggested intrusions. They're social, interactive, and combat related intrusions. Um, it's awesome. I'm seeing if I have my cards here, but I don't. <laughs> because if you if you use your deck, you know, you have your deck there. Um, bam, you know, it, 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 it gives you an idea. And that's the beautiful thing. They are very generic. So there's an idea there. And something else that you can use, especially if you want to get in the habit of sh- kind of shifting your conceptualization of intrusions, use your asset deck too. You know, th- but those decks are completely... Once in- again, what is an asset deck for someone that doesn't <laughs> know? <laughs> Oh, asset that deck. I have on me. <laughs> the asset deck is just like the uh, intrusion deck, oh, which is a deck of cards, that, again, uh, with, um, you know, uh, beneficial assets that you can give to a player. So these two, those two things, in my opinion, are excellent resources for a new GM. You know, um, in general, Monty Cook makes a deck for just about every concept within the book that you can take this card deck and use it you know there's an npc deck there's you know i mean all of those they're they're all pretty cool things and these are ways for you yep creature deck you know these are quick reference materials for you to use on the fly NPC, you know and it, it keeps your it keeps <laughs> the game moving um and it keeps it it, 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 it kind of takes the heavy lifting off yes. your shoulders so that was, uh, that, that's my two cents. My advice would be GM intrusions are a GM's best friend. You could correct any mistake that you make in game with GM intrusions. It's actually the whiteout. <laughs> it's true. And, and you know, when you're a younger GM, when you make a mistake, it, you tend to hop on it and 
feel that it's going to affect your entire narrative, your entire campaign, your entire story. Well, Cypher System Numenera, they actually give you an autocorrect tool <laughs> built into the system that will allow you to say, hey, I should have never gave these guys this super powerful weapon. <laughs> I don't like <clears throat> this village big bad I created. I don't think I, I don't like them. I don't I, or her. I don't. GM Intrusions allows you to correct that. It allows you to change the narrative to better fit your play style as you more mature as a GM or or become better at telling the story that you're trying to tell. So utilize that as a tool. I don't mean to cut you off, Anthony, but you know Anthony's passionate about what he's saying because he was tapping the table while he was saying <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, like... um. Because I was that GM. I was that person that made a mistake. And then two sessions later, like, oh, man, I should have never did that. You know, or I, like, oh, how I don't want to correct it without, you know, seeming like a jerk. Yes. Like, but right. not GM intrusions because you're actually giving them something, you know. So it's not like you're taking something away without giving them something in return. And right. I think um, that's the beauty of GM intrusion. And I, and I think that most new GMs, should embrace it and, oh, and yeah. uh, you know it is the white out of uh gming i never when, thought about it and, like that but that and, is an I mean, excellent it's, it's way to look at it you know i'm gonna take that i like that it's the white out of gming and then here's the other thing that take away from it because I, I think anthony's given everyone a really awesome piece of advice and that piece of advice is that you can use the concept of gm intrusions and it within a narrative based game to become better at your craft. You know, so, you know, take it, run with it. Um, Anthony, write that, write down that statement. <laughs> GM intrusion, the white out, the white out of gaming. Just tweet it out we're right now. That, we're going to put, no, we're putting that on a shirt. Uh, tweet yeah. it out with a TM, whatever, like oh, TM. We can get the white out bottle with the Cypher Unlimited. Like <laughs> there you go. There we go. That's what we're going to do. That, that's, that's a new shirt. Trust me. That's, that's a shirt. So silly. Look for it. Okay. Everybody go to Cypher Unlimited. Sean and Rob, our graphic artist. <laughs> Cypher Unlimited uh, website's coming soon with the Cypher Unlimited store. Oh, boy. The website near you. I was not right. consulted about this before. <laughs> All right, so I think um, we, we talked about GM intrusion, but the players have a, a way to counteract and to react to towards what the GM is doing when he's intruding into the narratives. And that's called player intrusions. It was first introduced in the Numenera Discovery book. So Dean, could you uh, grace us with a definition? A player intrusion is the player choosing to alter something in the campaign, making things easier for the player character. Conceptually, it is the reverse of a GM intrusion. Instead of GM giving uh, the player XP and introducing an unexpected complication for a character, the player spends one XP and presents a solution to a problem or complication. What a player intrusion can do depends on the PC type and is usually introduced introduces a change to the world or the current circumstance rather than directly changing the character. If a player has no XP to spend, they can't use a player intrusion. Not every player intrusion is listed here is appropriate for all situations. The GM may allow players to come up with other player intrusion suggestions, but the GM is the final arbiter of whether a suggested intrusion is appropriate for the character's type and suitable for the situation. If the GM uh, refuses the intrusion, the player doesn't spend the one XP and the intrusion doesn't occur. Using an intrusion does not require a character to use an action to trigger it. A player intrusion just happens. So that's the book definition. Yeah. All right, uh, the first thing I got is that player intrusions are a bit more by raw, you know, rules as written, or a bit more mechanical to me. They, they seem more like a rule base. It's not as free form as a GM intrusion where a GM has the liberty to um, directly affect the narrative in any way he or she sees fit. This is more based on your character type. So your intrusions are more based on what your decision and character creation was as opposed to changing the narrative. Yes. And real quick, I'm not going to read them out completely, but like... Uh, 
in the Numenera book, and I'm just going to touch the glaive just to give people an idea of what was being said. Um, the glaive, perfect setup, where basically he can intrude in the situation if he's fighting at least three foes, they're in the perfect position for him to make a single attack or a multiple attack against all of them, but he resolves it in one action. Um, old friend, basically you have uh, an asset of a person, they're going to show up at a critical moment to help you out or be able to help you with a situation. And then there's like the weapons break. Um, and that means what the, the person you're fighting, you can say their weapon is flawed in some way, or you know the exact spot to, you know, hit this particular type of weapon to break it or whatever. So that's what Anthony was referring to when he said they're more specific and more mechanical in nature. Um, to, to, to not make them so limiting, I actually go based on the whole character. Like, what would your character do in this situation? How would your character, not just based on the type, but the, the, how, the, how the person role plays the character. Like, would it make sense for how their character acts in game? If it makes sense, then I let it fly. If it makes sense for the character, I should say the play for player intrusions. Yes, At even their personality. Yes, even. yeah, even the even if it's not related to their type, like let's say that there's a a glaive who's quite charming, like his descriptor is charming, and he wanted a player intrude, like, hey, I'm trying to seduce, not seduce, but you know that's usually what charming people do, but whatever. He's trying to seduce his NPC, and he says, I want a player intrude, and just say that she loves me. Like that's it. It's just not. It's not. A, it's not limited to his type, but it's limited to his character as a whole, which makes more okay. sense. Like, and it's a, it's a little more liberating, and it's still um, pretty raw. Yeah, I, I would. I would definitely agree with that. I, and um, I, I think that's a great way of looking at it as well. I, I mean, I, I like that as well. Um, you know, player intrusions, as written, are nice. <laughs> Um, <coughs> but the free nature of Cypher system, you know, um, kind of inspired us early on. We've been using player, we were using player intrusions from day one, <laughs> yeah, from the first time we sat down to play. Um, and it's funny because before you know, we, we were, go into actual uh, house rules, let's actually break it down a little bit further. <laughs> I think I think that's more for the end of this discussion. I didn't want to cut you off. But makes I know, sense. No, makes no, sense. No. I know what you're leading to. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what are examples of good and bad versions of what you, as a GM, would allow a player to intrude? At? A good player intrusion, going by what the book was saying, um, I'll just use the glaive example for you know you know an idea, and a variant on the perfect setup. Um, I would let the player you know let, let's just say they were casing a joint you know casing a place for a situation. I would let the glaive you know set up some advantage advantage points for the players, you know. If they could maneuver the bad guys into a specific place or, you know, they play it the right way, they get an asset in this particular situation. I would, you know, wholeheartedly allow that type of intrusion. Uh, a bad intrusion for me would be, you know, the character always want to use it, you know. Um, oh, yeah, I've got a... Uh, I've got a, a dragon slaying arrow in my quiver, you know, that that's so mundane. That's so, you know, it, it, to me, it's just, it, it's not adding anything to the narrative. That's just you trying to cop out on being creative. I have a counterpoint. Um, I, you can keep going because I can, no, I'm not, but, um, but, oh damn, I lost my train of thought. Um, counterpoint was. Oh, the dragon slinging, sling arrow, yes, right. So good intrusions, bad intrusions. The way I feel about it is that it's kind of hard to have a bad intrusion. All intrusions have a place. For example, with Dean's ex example, like, I have a dragon sling arrow in my quiver, right? That, depending on the character, might not make much sense. But, let's say their character and this is their backstory, they come from a family of dragon slayers. Like, it's just how they 
planned it early on. Like and that that was their backstory from the get go. Then his mother was killed by a dragon. Yeah, yeah, it makes I mean, sense to have no, that I mean, sort of thing on you. That, and I think that would be different. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's I, what I mean. I, I'm trying that, to give that different perspective. Like, right, situational. Yeah, yeah, it's all situational. So again, to say what's a good intrusion, bad intrusion, let's go back to my charming glaive, right? So good intrusion, I explained it. He's saying, I want to say I'm super charming and here's one EXP. This person already likes me a lot and I don't have to roll to have them like me. Fine, that works. Bad intrusion for that character hey, we're exploring a cave, and I happen to notice there's, like, what looks like a weak spot in the rocks on the wall that maybe looks like some bandits hit some treasure there. Why would you know that? Why would you know that? That doesn't make sense. But if a character who, again, was a spelunker who had yeah. history of looking for these things said the same thing, I'd be like, yeah, you find a hidden cache. Like, what's in there? Like, we roll we roll that out, maybe? Like, we that adds a good element based on the character. And you know, and see your example of the charming glaive, it's it's perfect because I could even see in that being used in another method. Um, you know, if you do a chase scene, you know, and they're chasing, you know, we've seen it in a in a movie or two. They're chasing the they're chasing the hero and he runs through the the bathhouse with all the ladies <laughs> laying there and he's like, Ladies, you know, <laughs> and gives them give him the flashing smile, you know. And so his intrusion would be as he runs through, you know, they are looking and oogling at him when the guys that are chasing him come through, the girls stand up and show themselves or, you know, grab the guys and hold, you know, to give him a few more minutes. <laughs> you, know. Uh, um, you know, what's funny. I know in the first section of this video, I, I talked about how I despise the breaking of the sword or the weapon falls. But since player intrusions are mechanical or they feel mechanical to me, I think those are actually acceptable. Like I, like I like the warrior. You know, a, a good player intrusion is I, I I swung so hard I sundered the enemy's weapon and it shattered and they no longer have a weapon. Yes, that's a a good player intrusion. Even though I think it's a little like um, funny as a GM intrusion to be done to the players, I think it's perfectly acceptable the other way around as a player intrusion. Like or a speaker shows up somewhere to a new town and say, "Hey, you know, I I know a contact here because I, you know I I I spoke some someone from my organization is here and he'll give me an asset to help us locate a, a place we're looking for." I, you know, I I think those are all perfectly acceptable because they have some sort of mechanical background towards their character. So I, I would accept all those as um, acceptable player intrusions. The, the problem I think I have with player intrusions, when I think of bad <laughs> is I think players think it's like a free pass. It's not necessarily changing the, the narrative, but it's allowing them to jump an obstacle instead of, and instead of adding something new to the story is allowing them to like skip or bypass a section of the story. Well, if you, if you, but the way it's written and we talked about it mechanically, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. Yes. You know, yeah. the way it's written. Um, but, but you also as a GM one, you, you also have a right to deny it. Oh and, no, I'm like, not saying that, but I'm just saying this, how it's written. But I know we as players and we as GMs, you know, and as a collective, we, we're we always trying to drive the narrative and kind of encourage our players to do the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, I like the, I like the fact that, you know, you know, if you, if you kind of show those things, but even like you said, the mechanical aspects are great, you know, for players, you know, sh you know, shattering a weapon or mm -hmm. making an enemy trip over his own feet or, you know, whatever the may case may be, especially, you know, again, we're going for forward from Al's concept about how the flavor of the character, you know, what, what is the, if you got a character who's a, you know, a Loki type, you know, he's a trickster, he's a smart mouth, you know, I could wholeheartedly see him doing, you know, slapstick things to people, this, you know, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like I, 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 I just dislike the, Oh, it's my, you use a player intrusions and we'll use the same example of the sundering of the weapon. The, the, you know, I, I swung so hard, I sundered the weapon and they all ran away. Right. Now, now <clears throat> going from changing the narrative, making the, uh, slight, making the obstacle slightly easier for you 
to I'm just avoiding the obstacle because now they're running away for one XP. You know, and um, I, I don't think I'm here's the whole reason why, like what Dean said, whole the reason why we house ruled it. The one XP cost, I think, should limit the impact to the narrative. Right. That is definitely facts because as the system or, you know, as most people play the system, um, and as we mentioned earlier, even if you're not using GM intrusions, you should always keep EXP flowing because it's a resource. And as such, it's not hard to have one EXP on hand. <laughs> it's just right. not, it's not, it's very easy to have just yeah. one EXP it's on hand. Accessible, yeah, yeah. Very accessible. Very, very accessible. Yeah, so moment. it shouldn't dramatically change the narrative or ch change the scene. It should change the scene to benefit them, but not totally allow them to totally bypass the scene i don't think the, 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 the thing, and i think the thing about it is if once your players are at your table for a little while and are learning you as a gm and you're learning your players i think everybody kind of gets into a rhythm where they'll realize that no um breaking somebody's sword you know no everybody's not going to run away from you mm -hmm. you know especially you know I, I let things kind of flow at, at tier one. Nah, nobody's running away from you. You know, <laughs> you might, you might cause them to quake in their boots for, you know, a couple of rounds. You, I'll give you an advantage, you know, and I'll give you an, a, an asset against them the next round. Cause you just did something pretty awesome. I'll now, give you, but I'll a tier give you. four character with a reputation, I might let him get away with, you know, doing something, you know, I mean, there's a there's a, what, what's the maneuver? There's a maneuver that the uh, the glaive has one of their abilities. Hold on just a second. It's right here. Impressive display that costs two might points. So if they were to expend XP and, you know, on an impressive display at tier four, I might let them, you know, scare everybody away. You know. But oh, that's a good a good way a good concept a good way of looking at it. That's what I'm saying. It, it, you know, once you earn a reputation, once you're, you know you know, a, you know, Billy badass out there, <laughs> then, you know, you're, you're, you're in a position. And also player intrusions don't always necessarily have to be to the benefit of you. Hell, it could just be to um, screw with one of your players. And I'll give you a perfect example. One of the people you play with in the hero game in GM roulette, I, I use the GM XP to make the big bad guy. I mean, to make, Dean's brother, the guy chasing us. Remember? Yes, I, yes, 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 yes. And I allowed that it. Was it me that allowed it, or I forget who was a GM at the time that when you, you were the GM? Yeah, yeah, no, because again, that adds to the story. Or, oh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's and, and that literally had zero benefit to, to me anyone. At it, just, all. it was just I like, just, hey, I wanted I just, to change the story a little bit. That's what the fuck with Dean, <laughs> right? <laughs> and 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 that because you're saying that that kind of leads into what we were talking yeah. about earlier, our house rule. Yes, yeah. you essentially, know, we, yes, exactly. we were we like I said, we've been using uh, player intrusions from the beginning Since and, day we started, one. and we started out actually charging two XP for them, Yes, which you, makes more sense because you, we had no limitation. Right. You know, but our biggest thing about a GM intrusion or should I say a player intrusion, the biggest thing was that it did have some narrative merit, whether it was, you know, messing with another character or if it was, you know, adding to the narrative, was it shifting the direction, whatever the case may be. And I, I kind of like the concept of the two XP for that reason. But now with Al, you know, you, you've kind of added a nice little caveat to that. Because now, you know, where if you start looking at a person's descriptor, you know, are you charming? Are you, are you, are you driven? Are you vengeful? You know, now we can have your one yeah. xp and your two xp and now we have your one and two xp you know intrusions because now are you going to use something based on one of your descriptors you know to to drive the story or are you just going to be mechanical and do something based on your type mm -hmm. and, so um I, I think like the house rule is if you following the rules as written with our little additional that i'll add it on it's one xp but if you you basically changing the narrative Right. Without anything to do with your character type, you're just changing the narrative like a GM would with a GM intrusion is two XP. And for example, this is basically the same exact uh, example Anthony provided. I forget if I charged them one or two EXP to add that character to the story. I think it was two. But 
Another example is, I forget what other game, you love adding characters, and we were playing some game, and we were, oh, I think it was a Candyland game, and you were like, the boat driver is, is the gingerbread man's cousin, like, <laughs> you know, and you just, and it's awesome, like, why not allow that, he has two EXP, like, give me the EXP, and to make it, and it's hard not to allow it as a because it's fun, and you're not getting a benefit, I'm actually losing assets yeah. you know i'm losing assets out of it because i'm not benefiting in any way as a character yeah you're just adding another hook or another element yeah. to the story and you're losing resources on top of yeah. that to do so yeah. so it's perfectly again it's very, very balanced i feel like um and very fun on top of that yeah. and yeah. to go a little bit further um we also have instances where players during dramatic moments well, I know me specifically, would be like, I want to do something really crazy right now. Here's three, even four EXP. Can I do this really crazy thing? And usually it's a turning moment in the story or something. And even in our last game in the um, Lucas Sleeps with Fishes, I had a moment where I wanted to do something. I forget exactly what it was, but I was like, I only have one EXP. And we were like, Yo, can anybody else kick in an EXP? Like, we actually opened it to the table to say, hey... You know, this is this thing that this guy is trying to do is awesome. Let's work as a team to help him do it. And here's the, you know, collective three EXP from the table to get it paid for. And and here's the other thing, too. We don't, as players and everything else, you don't, it's not an automatic success. There's still a die roll involved. Yes. So there were still those, those, those you know, but it seems like, you know, the dice gods. <coughs> already, so the, the three XP hit the table and, you know, Al's plan and, you know, then we roll and got a, da- a natural 20. It was crazy, you know, in the, in, the, in the game with, you know, on such a high note, it's it's a lot of fun, you know. And- you know, also, too, I think it applies similar to what we said earlier about the when you allow the player to choose what they add in an intrusion, they tend to go on the, like, the smaller side of things. Like, most people don't shoot for the world, and I think that also applies with player intrusions. Like, um, especially with us, w- when they asking them to spend two XP, they they might. I think most players will ask for less than what you're willing to accept. And that's yeah, because cool. you have a tendency, and I do too. We listen to what the players ask for. And they add something. Add, yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. And so, well, again, not only do you do that, that, but this also could happen. Like, Or this could also happen. Or that could also happen. Like, Don't limit yourself to just doing one tiny thing. Like, Think big. Shoot for the stars. Because the worst thing I could tell you is no, and then we negotiate on something else. And there, exactly. there's no no biggie. <laughs> you know, and that and that and that I think those are the beautiful moments and the beautiful ideas of you know an interactive storytelling. You know, if if we really take it on that level that it's interactive storytelling, you know, remember the old choose your path books. Yeah. You know, well these are even cooler than choose your path books, people. You know, get out there, you know, get sit at the table, take some we never deny GM intrusions, you know, I, you know, I think. We actually haven't spoke about that. That's actually, a, when do you think, um, I, I know none of us deny GM intrusions as players, but do you think it happens often? And um, like, do you think it's beneficial for a GM to have their intrusions denied? Like, do you think it's a big deal? All like right. we, oh, I mean, I could touch on it. So, um, I don't actually play that often. I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Like, I very rarely have the emotional energy to go through games. I'm just a low energy person most of the time. Doesn't seem that way through my looks, but <laughs> either way, and my demeanor on camera. But either way, um, I've I have had games where people have denied intrusions and um, where it was me as the GM. And one mm. one um, instance I can think of specifically. Um, and it's never you guys. It's just some someone who I picked up. You know, I've made a looking for group post. I think it was my horror game, you know, cabin in the woods type horror where teens went to go camping and stuff happened. And it was a, again a horror situation. There was a killer after that. Um, and at one point they're in the cabin, and I forget exactly what's going down, but it's before they actually are encountering the killer. They're being menaced by him, but they haven't actually like gone face to face. And I offered the GM intrusion, but I forget exactly over what. And again, 
the tension of being, you know, basically stalked by the killer but not having him be around, they were like, a GM intrusion right now? I don't think so. Like, and gave me the one EXP. Mm -hmm. And again, I could have added something crazy to the story, like the killer grabs one of them or whatever have you. But again, it gives the player that feeling of agency. Like, I'm not just going to let you foil my plans because you feel it on a whim. Mm. It's it's going to be a trade-off because it's a mechanical trade-off between the player and the GM. And it's built into the system. It's like, hey, I have an EXP to say, hey, you can't do that. Because mm. I, I feel more comfortable in the story that we're telling right now. Mm -hmm. And and I'll, I'll say it this way. I don't think it's a good or bad thing to accept or deny. Um, I think... I, I think it's, again, it's, it really boils down to a choice. Um, maybe because I've, 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 I've run so many games and I've been doing it for so long. Um, I'm always excited when a GM is offering me an intrusion. <laughs> you know, I, I just am, you know, oh, give me some XP and, okay, what, 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 what has he got up his sleeve? You know, even though I'm like, and nine times out of ten is crazy because I'm into the story that's going on at the moment. But if a GM is like going, you know, I got an intrusion, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just interested in the next, you know, the, the the twist and a turn. And like horror games, in a horror game, you know, like I'll take a GM intrusion. I want GM. Give, give them all. Give them all. Yeah. And, and the flip side on that with the GM intrusion and um, what you call it, um, accepting or denying them, uh, I felt like it was a really good indication of that the story was being told very well yeah. that I mm -hmm. built the tension up enough that he felt like, mm -hmm. hey, wait a second, you might do something really crazy right now and I really don't want to see that. And they were in the in, they were immersed and they didn't want to have like something even crazier happened, you yeah. know, they actually right. had their tensions going. I mean, as a GM, right, a, a bit of advice is someone, I've rarely had people deny intrusions as well. I might have had it once or twice in the over 100 games I've run in the <laughs> system. But um, you have to be very careful as a GM if someone denies an intrusion that you don't immediately go back and it's sort of like what Al said, you don't immediately go back and intrude to, to put that story element into the story that you wanted anyway, because they wasted a resource to deny the intrusion. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a real, you know, like a crappy move to be like, okay, five minutes later, you just intrude the, the to a different player what you wanted to add to the narrative anyway. I think that's being disingenuous to the system. Yes. So like, it's something you should really be mindful of if someone denied a specific aspect to a, an intrusion then you should basically cut that out like they paid for the right for that not to be added to the narrative well and I think I, you know i've never even thought about it that way but i know i've never done it and because you know my thought process is i think it it's automatically means when they say no i don't want the intrusion okay it doesn't happen yeah and i move to the next i keep moving and, you know, when we move to the next scene, you know, and I don't, th I've never seen you do it, nor you do it, Al. I think we, uh, the we, reason why I brought it up because it happened to me as a player. So, no, uh, wait, what? I, I, I didn't deny the intrusion, but someone else at the table denied a specific intrusion, uh -huh. right? And I'm not getting into specifics and names or anything, but someone at the table denied a specific intrusion and they were stating the intrusion outright and then it happened like an hour later into the session. Jeez. So I, I felt like that person wasted an XP not to have that added into the story. So they basically wasted the XP for nothing. And, right. so, and again, you could tell Anthony's passionate because he's tapping into yeah. You know, so that, that, <laughs> that, that taught me a, a vital lesson because yes. I learned from every GM I I never thought about that with. either when uh, when you mentioned yeah, it, but yeah, it yeah, makes so we, we do either. it naturally yeah. but to think that there's you know that mindset that my intrusion got denied you know what fuck it I'm gonna do that shit later anyway like you know, it's <laughs> yeah. kind of messed up <laughs> yeah you should and, do that. And here's the thing I, and I think this is something that we haven't said the biggest thing with playing Cypher System, the biggest thing with doing what we're doing, we're playing a narrative-based game. 
please drop the mentality of GM versus player. It's not that. You know, I'm guilty of it. Hey, anybody who's been playing for more than, you know, 10 or 15 years, you know, especially going back to the old days, we're all guilty of it. You know, and I was a, I was a purveyor of the GM versus player idea back in the old days because that's what I thought, you know, that competitive idea where, you know, I don't know when it flipped for me or switched for me and I started wanting to tell grander stories and just making it awesome, an awesome experience. So I think that's another thing. I think that's another way to avoid that pitfall that Anthony's talking about, about trying to pull a, a, a denied intrusion and springing it on somebody later. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say, I, I'm not sure if the person did it intentionally. I think that there was an aspect of the story that they wanted put into the story, but they shouldn't have stated it because like, yeah. I don't think it was done maliciously at all. I'm not trying to imply that at all. What I'm trying to imply is that they, they, they had a certain aspect. They had something they wanted to add into the story, right? And the player didn't want it added it in. So wasted an XP. They wasted a resource right. to specifically say, I don't want this added into the story. And the GM said, I need to put this in the story and just did it, just added it in on someone else's intrusion. And in that case, like, just add it into the story naturally where it fits. Without don't, don't, yeah, don't make it an intrusion because again, the intrusion gives the player the chance to be like, don't. <laughs> like, yeah. it does, oh, like even again, we say most like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people accept the intrusion. There's always that chance that a player will be like, actually, let's not. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to have to be like, again, the same situation Anthony is describing, where you're like, oh, now how am I going to include this without saying, oh, I'm gonna intrude on this guy and do it anyway. Um, just include it in the story naturally. And I think people I think people don't understand the concept of an intrusion. I don't think they're really getting the whole perspective. The intrusion should be an additive to the narrative. It's normally something that may not is not part of the the the, the, the baseline concept. It's a shift. You know, you're working you know, it's the Indiana Jones situation. You know, it's, you know, I got to get the, the artifact off of the off of the table. Okay, so I'm working. Well, I mess up. Oh, now pieces of the floor start to fall. You know, intrusion. This wasn't going to happen if you did the right thing in the first place. <laughs> yeah. You know, as a GM, if I want to add an element, you know, those things are there. I have those places. But if I want to add something to it, okay. You know, oh, the room is filled with snakes. They're coming out of the ceiling and they're starting to fall down, you know, and some of them are poisonous. Some of them are constrictors. You know, that that's an intrusion that I could add into the game, you know, and I would give an XP for that. But if, you know, the player said, no, I don't want that. Okay, that intrusion has gone away. It, it didn't happen. Move on to the next scene. All right, this is the last final question before I think we'll lead into our final statements. We'll each give a final statement of what we think, what our feelings overall about GM intrusions are. But for my final question is, do you announce the GM intrusion beforehand or do you keep it secret before you ask the person, ask the player if they want to uh, deny the intrusion? Do you state the intrusion beforehand or do you keep it so- secret? I know we've seen people online, Twitter, wherever have you. War met. as written, you're supposed to state it. Really? Yeah. See, this is what and happens when you don't read books, because I don't read books. I just get a basic gist of the thing and then run with it. Mm. Uh, personally, I feel like stating the intrusion outright kind of goes against the whole point of an intrusion. Because if you know what's coming, it's not really an intrusion. They, you, If you state it outright, the person is way out pros and cons to accepting this intrusion. That's not real life. Real life, like if you're writing a story or again, I'm talking about, you know, you want it to feel realistic. Like you mm. want people to feel immersed in what's going on. If you say, hey, something, something's going to happen and you tell them straight up, Nobody, nobody in real life in a story can know what's going to happen next before deciding whether they want to take it on. It just happens. Like, it, we, and, but the thing is, with Cypher System and Numenera, whatever have you, 
just the fact that we state a GM intrusion is happening should be enough for them to say, hey, something's going to happen one way or the other. Yeah. You know, good or bad. Yeah, yeah. They shouldn't know the specifics because, again, in real life, you don't know whether major events in your future are going to be negative or positive. They just happen. And I will agree 199.999 to 200% with Al. Only because I agree. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to play the devil's advocate because you guys both know I don't announce what it is. Yeah. But here, I, I'll play the devil's advocate. Okay, I'm going to let you play the devil's advocate because I just want to say. Cause, you, I mean, I, I'll, you'll respond. I'm just going to give you the devil's advocate because I think we all have the same opinion. Um, a, opinion, so I'll let you clarify our opinion. But the devil's advocate is is that it isn't necessarily keeping the story forward. A GM intrusion is actually setting the pause button on the story. It's stopping the story. So whatever the, the GM states as the GM intrusion hasn't actually happened until the player accepts it. Right. Yeah. I mean so 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 when you state it beforehand, it's basically hitting the pause on the on the recording and saying, "Hey, this can happen if you accept it, and if you don't, then forget everything I just said, right?" And we go right back to start. You know, I I unhit the pause button and the story continues the way you're describing, Al. Is the story is still running? Yeah, right? it makes more sense for it to be all... No, I, I agree with you. No, but no, but let some me... Some people don't view it that so way. So let me, again, reply. To, I mean, do you want to say something, then? Because you were talking before. I don't want to just take the well, spotlight from this. all moment. I was saying was, you know, that that conceptualization, that's, that's just it. For me, the story, I don't want to stop the story. I don't want to hit a pause button. I want the story to continue to move. That, um, if, I, if I offer you, if I'm offering you a GM intrusion... Um, yeah, there is no pause there. You know, you're just going, yes, it happens. No, it doesn't happen. And when you say that, that gives me perchant to shift the narrative, you know? And once again, the shifting of the narrative sometimes is to change the direction because the players have done some pretty off the wall stuff that I wasn't expecting. Other times it's just to add an element you know, a cooler element or whatever the case may be. And then other times, you know what, it is beneficial for the players because I, you know, and I think once you kind of get your players to understand that GM intrusions are not necessarily negative or positive, their story, their story perks, their, their, their story points. And I think once you get your players to understand that that's what's going on, you know, you know, again, Al's horror game is a perfect example. I don't want um, any complications, any more complications <laughs> with right now. You know, Dean, you brought up a good point, but I, I want to um, like state the cases as a GM. You have to show the players that that GM intrusions are not positive or negative. They just oh, change, yeah. and by doing that, is actually throwing in some GM intrusions so the players can physically right. see right. that everything is a negative. Right. Because and if you don't do that, they'll never get that concept. Yes. Well, I know. I mean, but and I think that's one of the biggest things, though. And I think you know, I, I kind of try to state that in the beginning, as well, when I first start playing with people. And I know I'm a little, and I'm. My, my GM intrusions, especially when I have newbies, are they're, 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 they're lenient, if you will. They're not as impactful one way or the other, just to get them in the mold of accepting them and using them. And then as they get more comfortable with the system, I amp, the, you know, I, I amp it up, you know. But um, for me to go back a little bit to touch on the devil adv advocacy point you mentioned... I, I've, I've definitely seen people on the server discuss this in a manner that I actually find acceptable. And, and they're very opinionated one way or another. Uh, no, 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 no. A lot of people that are actually I'm prefer not, having I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about um, like one versus the other. I'm talking about a way to do the announcing, like where you announce it in a way that actually kind of works. I forget who mentioned it on the server. My gut wants to say Tattered King, but I don't remember fully. Uh, I feel like... Again, sorry if it's not you, Tattered, but I feel like someone mentioned it. And they said when they do intrusions, 
um, they again they present an EXP or whatever have you, and they say, "Hey, an intrusion's about to happen." And instead of saying outright what the intrusion is, they're vague with it. Let's say they're in a cave. They say, "You notice some stalactites trembling." Do you want an intrusion? Mm-hmm. Like you don't state it outright what's gonna happen, but it kind of gives them a kind of an idea of what the direction it's gonna head. Whereas we keep it completely mysterious, like, hey, do you want an intrusion? That's it. That's all the information we give. But again, if you're going to announce it, I feel like this is a better way to do it. It still gives that element of surprise. They don't know if it's going to be good. They don't know if it's going to be bad. They just have the insight of, hey, it has to involve those stalactites or whatever have you. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer, even though I, I tend to, I prefer not to announce the intrusion. Well, I agree with the both of you. I think that... Um, I'm more concerned with the flowing of a narrative, and I'm and Al knows that I'm very I, I, I take pride in keeping my time, like I, I I'm a big fan of pace, and I like I like you know if I have a four hour session that I wanted to run in four hours, and I think all those little elements of when you announce something before the intrusion, it eats up five or six minutes of people discussing whether or not to accept it or not. And then it all eats up into your overall time. And um, on top of that, it also puts player in the mindset of meta. What's what's the benefit to accepting this? What could be the drawbacks to accepting this? And they end up going back and forth about whether or not it's worth the risk or that doesn't happen in real life. It just happens. what I'm saying. I think what Al was saying, because I think I've done I've never even thought about it. I, the foreshadowing. Mm. The foreshadowing is fine. If you foreshadow that there's a possibility of the stalactites falling or, you know, you, like you said, the, the st- trembling stalactites. You know, that I've could actually, be anything. That could be anything. But I'm just saying, yeah. like I, I did that one time and, you know, they were trembling because they were holograms, <laughs> you know. And, you know, what I did was, I, you know, added in the element that these were basically you know uh you know holographic images you know created by magic to hide these 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 basically gargoyle like monsters you know but that was the intrusion you know i will foreshadow foreshadowing is great yeah that's an awesome you know um but i don't want like i'm with with you no meta gaming um let's not eat up our time Let's let's manage our time. Let's keep the story flowing, you know. So yeah, I'm not a fan of announcing what it is beforehand. I won't do it. All right. Speaking of time, I think we've run a long overtime <laughs> on this video. So could everybody just give a quick thing? What's your yay or nay on intrusions, player and GM? I'll go first. Uh, definitely uh, yay on both. I. I if I had to say anything about intrusions is GMs use them, but don't overuse them. Don't saturate your game with a million intrusions. I think a lot of players, I mean, a lot of GMs confuse what could be an intrusion to what's actually the narrative of your basic story is learning the difference between the two, what directly changes the narrative and what's the base of your story. And, um, once you get the hang of that, GM intrusions are your best friend, and um, I recommend everyone to use them. And as a player, go ahead, shoot for the yeah. moon with your player intrusions, because yeah. you'll find nine out of ten times the GM is going to allow you to do what you're actually seeking, or something close to it. Yes. And, My uh, final statement on all of this is get an asset deck, get an intrusion deck, you know, just buy some decks. That's first and foremost. Um, the second thing about them is remember, they're neither positive nor negative. They're story, they're, they're, they're story points. Um, and then think about it this way also. When a player rolls a one on a die, you as a GM get a free intrusion. You don't have to give out XP for that. But don't make your players think just because they roll a one, it's something dire. Yes. Learn them. Learn. Learn them. Give them a complication, more so than just a failure, when they roll a one for a GM intrusion. So, you know, um, use them. Don't be afraid of them. Players, you know, as I think we'll all tell you, shoot for the moon. You know, because sometimes you'll catch a star. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, go for it. 
And those are my final thoughts. Um, yeah, definitely. If I had to echo your sentiments. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's shoot for the stars. Like, again, the worst thing a GM could tell you is no, and then you negotiate, which again, is not this kind of the point of collaborative storytelling. But again, like Anthony said, nine out of ten times you'll find that a GM will allow it. And because it makes the story that much better, it adds such a fun element. And th that's basically the point of all is to have fun, tell a fun and interesting to story together. And if I had any last thoughts to speak on GM intrusions and player intrusions, oh, well, player intrusions, I basically just said, shoot for the stars. Like, go, go for it. Like, do some insane stuff. Like, that's the whole point. And then with GM intrusions, like I said earlier in the video, um, kind of going contrary to these two guys, don't feel obligated to use them. Like, they are an amazing tool, but it does take some time to get used to figuring out the right moments. Like, you know, figuring out just the proper way to get them in there without it feeling too forced or anything like that. And until then... Have one intrusion in session. Have no intrusions until you're comfortable. Let the players decide what the intrusions are. Again, it's collaborative storytelling. Even if it is a GM intrusion, ask your player, hey, what went wrong? It doesn't hurt. It, and again, it immerses people more because they feel more invested in what's going on because they had that input. Hey, real quick, Al, before you uh, finish up, Al said something pretty cool. If you and if you decide that you're only going to try like one intrusion a session, just make it a group intrusion. Just make it a full on group intrusion, you know, and I just wanted to add that in because I think that will save you and then everybody gets the benefit of it. Yes. You know, you don't have to touch on one intrusion per player. They all got touched. And um, on top of that, just to just to throw this out there, um, when players want to, let's say, deny a group intrusion. That where we have them pool resources to possibly say, hey, we, we need two EXP to deny this intrusion. Who's going to give me two EXP? Or, you know, that no, no one ever denies them. But that's how we go about it if they were inclined to. <laughs> Just not when we don't say the group intrusions automatically happen, though. There is still that agency. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, this has been an awesome talk. Uh, very in-depth talk. A lot more in-depth than I was expecting. But it was a very awesome talk because... Um, I feel like a lot of people hesitate when it comes to GM and player intrusions. They're not sure what's acceptable or what might not be acceptable. But what really boils down to is try. Just try it. The worst thing is you make a mistake, you g do another GM intrusion, fix the mistake. Like <laughs> Anthony said, it's the whiteout. Fix it. If you're the player, the worst thing the GM could tell you is no. You come yeah. up with another solution. It's not the end of the world. So just go for it. And uh, yeah, any any last thoughts, guys, before I close this out? I just salute all you GMs out there getting ready to embark on this great journey. You know, <laughs> do you tell a great story? Exactly. That is a very fine sentiment. And, um, you know, be sure to like, share, subscribe, share us around. You know, hopefully people will feel a little more comfortable with GM intrusions and player intrusions after watching and listening. And uh, yeah, we'll have... Our usual descriptions down below. Oh, what Ant I, so I already saw the point. Hit the little bell to get <laughs> notifications about notification. our new videos because that you want to be up to date whenever we get these out. And uh, yeah, I, I intruded on you on your intro. I saw you pause. But anyways, from us at the CU, we will see you later. Take care. Deuces.